you. Many names, many titles. Saxon lands fall submissive to your rule. The Mercian kingdom dominates, yet the island is not yet fully conquered. To the southwest, Wessex lingers, weak but undefeated, and to the west, the pernicious Welsh remain a thorn. Subjugating both will secure your borders, yet Northumbria poses your greatest threat. It threatens to overthrow the Picts and become a powerful enemy. The only answer is its absorption into your own realm. Across the waves, Ireland offers promising territory, but should be approached with caution. Its people are unruly and more than a little dangerous. And to the east, Vicious men seeking blood and plunder cast voracious eyes upon your shores. Be ever vigilant of the Viking Danes. Despite these challenges, control of the Isles shall be yours. Take up your sword and make Mercia great. Indeed that they shall, the Kingdom of Mercia shall rise up so welcome fellow spartans how are you doing and this is the start of my exclusive campaign as the kingdom of mercia on the age of charlemagne dlc for total war attila which is coming out on the 10th of december so a big thanks to creative assembly for giving me early access to cover this before its release and i'm really pleased that i got to cover mercia as they seem a really interesting faction to play as with a starting location that really gives the player a lot of different possibilities for expansion and this was a great and very important period of history for the British Isles where we began to transition ourselves from the old Roman ways into the dawn of the medieval ages. Now just to address a question I know a few of you may ask in the comments below and that is why Mercia and not Wessex are playable on this campaign with the Kingdom of Wessex of course seen as a jewel in the crown within England and they were but not until later on when Alfred the Great was king about a hundred years after this is set of course you can see this starts in the year 768 AD and at that point they were the only real kingdom left after the invasion of the Danes but at this point when Charlemagne was alive Mercia was the most prominent and I think the largest faction in the land so it made sense for these to be playable uh, in this area of the map. I'm sure though, though down the line mods will unlock all factions to be playable in this DLC at some point. So this is a great addition to Attila I feel their largest DLC to date and improves a lot of the mechanics of the game and adds some really cool features and improvements which we will discover and talk about as we go through this campaign. I did make a video however on my channel covering some of these so go check it out if you haven't done so already. I also love the UI improvements which have been made and really help to immerse you into the period 
that this is set and the unit cards for example have been a particular favorite so without further ado let's jump into the campaign and please show your support for the start of this series and spear that like button i know i can rely on you guys to help me out so here we go so war weariness information this is just basically one of the new features which has been implemented so if you have prolonged periods of war with certain factions and you're not progressing in that campaign against them you are not um, taking land from them you're not winning battles then this war weariness will sort of go up and up and it will add to uh, public order drop uh, it will also create uh, poor morale within your armies and affect their integrity and things like that so that's something we've got to be aware of throughout this campaign basically so our first mission a broken world reach imperium level three and that's our sort of first um objective here we will hit uh, that we will then get five thousand treasury for doing so because ultimately the the main goals for these um, well the main objective for this campaign is to reach for a minor victory or short victory imperium level five a long victory imperium level seven and then a domination victory of again imperium level seven but also control 110 settlements so you can see there the imperium level is a big um sort of factor in this campaign and as you can see if we go into the faction summary we are still at Imperium level 1, so very insignificant at the moment. But as we build up, hopefully that will start to go higher and higher in the uh, in the campaign. So as you can see here, obviously while we're on this screen, we'll have a look at the traits for Mercia. So the two things that are specific to us is Spores of War. So um, doubled unit replenishment when taking on defeated troops post-battle. That's very good because I do like to take on warriors a lot when I do uh, fight a battle and win a battle. So that would be very good to have having the double unit replenishment from doing so. So that's a nice little feature. And also extra income for every enemy unit we destroy. So it's very important after a battle to keep fighting on and taking down those enemy units and destroying them off because obviously it'll give us extra income for doing so and of course we're 100 percent christian in these lands which is obviously uh, understandable and uh, power power balanced imperium yeah and food surplus so there you go and it's the situation in terms of diplomacy we are currently already at war with the kingdom of gwyned i think that's how you pronounce it and the kingdom of is it Powers? Powers? I can't. I, my pronunciation of some of these factions will be terrible. Is it Powers or Powers? Um, I know obviously they're both Welsh factions, so they will be our first targets, ladies and gentlemen. They will, that's who we'll be going for first. Now we have got a client vassal of the Kingdom of Kent. They are our clients, client region over here. So these guys are. A tributary state of ours but i think if i'm correct they could backstab me pretty early on so we're gonna to have to be careful of that with them but as you can see here the kingdom of gwynedd and kingdom of powers they are our first targets take these two factions out in wales try and secure the whole of wales if we can i think that's our first objective secure that area and then we'll look to maybe go down to kent and maybe wessex take these guys out. probably make wessex another tributary state of ours maybe uh, obviously if kent do rebel against us we'll take them down completely and then we'll do the same with northumbria make them our client vassal move into ireland secure there probably not make them our client states actually just actually completely overthrow them and uh, control their lands and obviously we'll move into scotland as well then once we've unified the british isles we'll then move into um you know europe itself and start to take on uh, maybe Charlemagne and the Danes, if that is if the Danes haven't come across to us in the meantime, which they may possibly do. But it's great how you can do that in Total War. You can always try and change history. I mean, obviously, you know, the, the year is 768 AD and we could potentially be invading parts of France when 300 years later in actual history, the Normans invaded us. But you know, it'd be great to sort of try and change the course of uh, history in this uh, campaign today. So, of course, as well, you know that your comments are always welcome, your suggestions, your 
opinions about where I should go, what I should do, who I should take on is always welcome. So let me know down below if you've got any sort of thoughts about what you, I sh you, sh you think I should do in this campaign. So let's crack on. So we've got this one army here, St. Albans Champions, and here we go, these lovely unit cards on display. And this is our King of Mercia, King Offer. Our faction leader, here he is in his all his, his glory. So he has got our main army and he's going to be going in to um, Wales personally himself. Now we're playing this campaign on both very hard battle and campaign difficulties. Just want to let you know that before we uh, went any further. So we've got an army here straight away. The Wild Beast, we can take these guys on. We'll do so in a second. I'm going to hire some mercenaries for the battle. I'm going to hire another unit of cavalry because I think we need a bit more mobility and some mercenary thanes. Or th is it thanes or thing th things? I can't pronounce that either. Try, try and help me out as much as you can, guys, in the comments below. You know, phonetically spell them out for me and then hopefully I'll improve as we go along. I do know some of the names, but some of them obviously I'm a bit ropey on. So uh, they are ready there. Litchfield. So again, these unit cards for the buildings have been improved and have been changed and designed to make them feel and look like sort of medieval artistry was at that sort of time. So I like that again, a nice immersive feel to it with these changes. Um, and of course, this is only this has only been changed for this campaign. It won't be different in the grand campaign, the Attila unit cards, things like that. They will be exactly the same as they were when the game was fully launched. It's just obviously for this campaign, as you, as you would expect. So um, what we need to go for, so minister, because we can actually set um, regions now to be actual specific regions which will do a job for your faction. So we've got a, a manor sort of set, a settlement at Chester, a sort of ministry or um, a sort of religious um, city at Litchfield, obviously as you can imagine the great Litchfield Cathedral there, this is going to be a sort of a, a, a settlement where religion is very uh, prominent and that will then affect all your other regions in the province apparently. But yeah, you can create actual specific regions now which, which will do a job for you and your faction which is good. So, um, Baddocks, yeah, I think we'll go for that. Some fried uh, axemen, thane spear, thane spearmen, uh, fried javelin men. Um, yeah, so we'll go for them. Improve the barracks there. Let's get some better units um, under our control. Is it fried? I think it's is it fried, isn't it? Fried spearmen, th fried uh, javelin men, uh, I believe. So you're going to go this way. I want you to try and see what's down over here because, right, this kingdom here, is it? The Kingdom of Glensing. They are on the south coast of Wales. Okie dokie. This is... Um, I, need, I need Mitch, who works at Creative Assembly, to help me out with these names. He's obviously from Wales, and he would know these <laughs> like his own name. But for me, I'm going to struggle with some of these, I can tell you that. So this is the tech tree. They've improved it a little bit. They've made it that each sort of tech has now been... Um, well now, now It's now displayed in sort of a... A, a stained glass sort of window feel to it. You can see there they've already been ticked and you can see there obviously nice colours that have been added to those uh, technologies. So we're going to go for another one here. Now I'm going to probably go from go for not from so go for this one Civic King's Decree gives me a bit of public order. So you can see now that's highlighted up now it's nice and the green and the prominent colours it's got look uh, very good indeed, I like that. Nice addition as well. So we'll go for that one. So that's that. Spy, you carry on down there. See what the situation around the area for me. And uh, in terms of everything else, I don't want to recruit or build anything else really. We've got the barracks going at Litchfield. And we've got the two mercenary units which are going to be used in a second. So I may as well just go for it now. And we're going to have a battle, ladies and gentlemen, quite early on in the campaign. Obviously, you want to get a battle in, don't you, as soon as you can with any of these campaigns, so it's good to see we're going to be doing one straight away. It's pretty much 50-50 with a balance of power, so we're going to fire it, of course. You guys are going to see some action on the campaign map, or sorry, on the battle map, I should say. And we'll have a look at the units that are on display for Mercia. So let's hope we can uh, win our first battle, of course. It's always uh, good to start off with a, with a winning, um, winning battle. And of course, we'll take into account the fact that you know you do get extra income from taking down these units. So we will do that if we are 
victorious. So we'll make sure we use our cavalry to uh, our advantage. And they have changed a lot of the statistics with these units, I believe. I was talking to some of the developers when I was down there a few weeks ago. And in, when I say that, they've changed it so that um, battles do last a little bit longer now. Uh, oh, it's always raining in Wales. But it's now dry. Thank God for that. <laughs> I didn't want to really fight in the rain. So, yeah, they've changed the, the, the statistics. Get my words out. Um, so that they've made it, as I say, the battles last a little bit longer. Uh, which is obviously pretty good because you can imagine these units have got heavier armour than they used to have. So they would fight on for longer. So it's good to see that we're going to have a bit more action now in these battles than before. So nice to see. So these cover units are going to go on the right flank. They're going to go right out there. Try and outflank and outmaneuver the enemy if they can. We've got the fried spearmen. They're going to go front rank here. And then, oh, where are you, King Offer? You can come, you can come back a little bit, thank you. We don't want you to be uh, in the front rank. So go back there, group them all to. No, we won't group them all together. I know I'm pronouncing them wrong. Thegs, is it Thegs? You're gonna have to tell me how to pronounce that one, because that's gonna bug me. Because I know I'm gonna be using a lot of these units in this campaign, so I want to make sure I'm pronouncing them right. <laughs> So yeah, do let me know in the comments, guys. But before we start the battle, like we do with any of our mod videos that I cover on the channel, let's have a quick look at the units, you know, right up close and personal. So these are the the spearmen, so the very light armored units. You can see very poor armor, so they will be susceptible to a cavalry charge or a heavy. Uh, charged by the infantry, but these guys, these are very, well, not very heavy, heavy melee infantry. Tier 2, excellent armour to them as well. You can see their helmets looking very nice there. The Saxon helmets. Sort of Danish-esque Danish sort of shields as well, by the looks of things. Round shields, if I'm correct. Nice chain mail to them as well. These guys, so obviously, again, these are mercenary ones with hide in, but the same units. This is the... The actual world companions of Offer. Oh, he's ready. Whoever was there. Where is where is he? There he is. There's Offer. His very nice helmet there. Signifying himself as king. Oh, he looks good there. With his sort of chainmail across his face. I like that. They look nice. These are quite interesting uh, Saxon helmets, aren't they? There. Right, so that's them. And quickly have a look at the archers. They'll be very standard. Yeah, yeah they are. We've seen them before in this game, they don't look much different. And the cavalry, now these guys should look a little bit uh, have improved. Now you can see these are, st they are definitely these Saxon helmets here. I've seen these before, particularly in The Last Kingdom, if you've been watching that series on TV. These are very uh, prevalent in that, uh, in that series. So yeah, that is your units, ladies and gentlemen. And we shall, without further ado, start this battle. And pray to God we can come through. So let's push forward. We'll take our time here. We do not want to tire out our men early on. So they're going to sit back by the looks of things. And I don't blame them. We have got the slight advantage. You know, with numbers I think, have we? Yeah, we have. We have. We've got literally about, hang on. About 300 plus. What, 200? I can't really count guys today. About 280, something like that, isn't it? Yeah, so um, <laughs> I couldn't count by the looks of things. Uh, but yeah, we've got, a, we've got a superiority in our numbers here. Like, let's just say that. Um, so they're going to sit back, as you can expect. And we are going to keep manoeuvring our cavalry around to get on their right flank. Now they've positioned their <coughs> archers on both sides. Ah, the Welsh archers. I wonder if these are the start of the, uh, the Welsh longbowmen, the great longbowmen. Which the English used as in core. And were so so famous in the English army for that time for their ability to you know, fire fast, fire long, and just really become a deadly um, asset to the English army. So yeah, they are on that flank there. They've got their general positioned on that side as well. Interesting. And this this side this side is weaker, I feel like we could put, we could pin and go for this side. Draw the enemy to go across to support, and then we can hit him 
once they're vulnerable with our cavalry to uh, to finish the job hopefully so let's just see him moving in as they go closer and closer towards the enemy here lovely stuff men of Mercia are ready for victory today I hope and of course then once you've taken down this army if they do their next target will be the city that is in Wales I can't remember the name of it we'll find out after this battle and that will be the next uh, target to take the city for mercy and have a foothold in Wales because that will be a big big plus at that point because once we've got Wales we've secured that area we have then direct access to Ireland and of course we can then go and take Ireland quite quickly and I'll hopefully then try and make Ireland a sort of uh, region where it's very fertile I, I should imagine um, so we can have a lot of food production in that sort of area of the map it's out of the way it's on the border of the campaign map we shouldn't be susceptible to any enemies over there so we should be able to have a very safe location where we can just produce food for the, uh, the faction to live off I hope that's the plan but uh, we'll find out if that will be the case very soon so these archers get in range you move forward quicker now go for the general but don't go too far that we can't pull you back soon to uh, be protected by the infantry Right, we're beginning to fire now. We're beginning to let loose. Archers! Try and go there, because you're in range of the their archers at the moment, which I want to try and avoid if I can. I'll go for the heavy shot. Can you just fire? If that's all right. If that's okay. Don't keep going forward, because that's not what we want. Okay, let's get into position. Get a few shots off here. Because no doubt they will react to this. They're already they're already reacting by going to loose formation. Right, while we're doing that, we're gonna move the main body in now. Now some of the voice acting in this uh, campaign you'll be thinking what it doesn't sound any different to the main vanilla campaign and that is because it hasn't been changed but a lot of people picked it up on the first live stream and obviously you can imagine all this sort of um, voice change and things like that for this just for this DRC would cost a lot of development time and money and it's obviously something they can't really invest in at the moment in terms of time because obviously they've had to invest it into the design of the game and things like that which obviously takes precedence so um, if you are thinking why the hell is he saying some of the things they are then that is the reason so do not be alarmed guys I just wanted to point, you out, point that out to you so cavalry go round the back a little bit further so we're going to engage here now we're going to get some contact in the charge here Boom! Okay, the flight beam have gone in, so let's get these units of thang thangs, thangs, or whatever they are, to go in to support sword on spear. Obviously, spear, so sword will come out better. Right, cavalry, we got to go in now. We got to get these units of archers out the way. So let's go, go, go. So archers go on the side here, try and get some shot to the left if you can to avoid hitting our own men I know I know don't worry I'm not concerned for the moment because we're gonna go for these archers and rip them apart storm storm stamp them to the ground one of these units is of spearmen is trying to take a lot of losses on the side here I think it is oh it's over there right support them now support them now before they start to waver Levy Spearman should be, uh, should start to suffer now with the fact I'm charging him in the rear. Okay, all unit of cavalry trying to come across to intercept. You carry on going for that unit of archers. We're going to have to sacrifice this cavalry unit for the moment just until they can break down these archers. We are starting to see, ooh, a little bit of mass routage there. Interesting. They didn't think they'd go down that quickly, but they have. Oh, archers, my archers are starting to fire across. Oh, good. Now we are starting to see a lot of breakage here. Oh, they've rallied there quite quickly, understandably. 
Okay, they've wavered there, so Paulie's across. Archers are wavered there. Or are wavering. They're not fully gone yet. Let's surround these gets here. Archers, face the other way. You've done your job. And actually, no, go across here. Go for the cavalry. Actually, go for the general units. Actually, broken off. Enemy losing ground. Great to see. Great to hear. It's always nice to see on a campaign map. Or on a battle map. It's also good to see on a campaign map as well, actually. <laughs> right, come on. Let's go across for this general unit. Oh, complete routage kicking off there. That centre is broken. Pull forward. Oh, the cavalry's going, unfortunately. Therefore... Do we don't want to lose this cavalry unit? Is that the oh, that's the mercenaries that haven't been killed off? My actual unit's being uh, the one that's taken the damage, which is a shame because obviously mercenaries cost the money. I don't care about mercenaries when they're dead, as you can imagine. But we'll get them to replenish soon. We'll take on the warriors obviously after the battle, which will ensure we get double replenishment, which is good. Have we go back for that unit over there, the Welsh archers, they've rallied back, so we'll take them down now. Zoom into the action again, General's pulling away once again. Trying to get out of the mass. Oh, let's go for some shots. Oh, General's down. General, try and go for the General if you can before he breaks away. Because if not, he's going to get away, and the fact, the problem is, he'll get away to fight another day. I think, with him having nine men left, we haven't been able to take really anyone down here. Oh, we can take them down. So we're going to the, as I call, the Benny Hill stage of the battle now. <laughs> but we've done well there, and we were losing the end. We only lost, what, um, about 250, didn't we? So we didn't do too bad. Could have been a lot worse. Right, done. That is it. Decisive victory. Great way to start this campaign. So there we go. Oh, no, we didn't. I cannot count, as I said to you. 315 men we lost in the end. But we took down 1,028, which is obviously a very good sight to see. But, yeah, the general did get away. But here we go. We can take on. That's doubled now. It would have been 4%. We've now been able to take on 8% of units then we can replenish back from the warriors we've taken on. So, they have been able to get away, though. That's not a problem, though. They are very weak now. Very weak indeed. I don't think we're going to be in range to attack them this turn. No, we're not. So, we shall just stay as we are. We can't replenish, unfortunately, because we're in, in enemy territory. I feel maybe we should just... I don't know. Should we force march ourselves back just to there? So we can replenish? You know what? I'm going to do that. I'm going to do just that. Because now we can replenish quite significantly. We're still in range of the enemy. We can still see what they're doing. And more importantly, we've got a stronger unit or stronger army back uh, under our control. So we'll do that. Okay, so all oh, these households have been improved. These um, icons. We'll see what they look like during the next turn. But yeah, the uh, tech tree, or not the tech tree, sorry, the general's skill tree has been improved a little bit as well. So good to see. So authority or cunning. Cunning will give us the... Melee defense, maintenance costs, and upkeep costs. Oh, that could be good. And that would give us the authority of the public order morale. Oh, that would give us more cunning, actually, by increasing that to level 2 strategist. Strategist, sorry. Strategist. What am I talking about? Strategist. Yeah, we'll go for that. Yeah, yeah, we'll definitely go for that. Incre increases our, our melee defense and upkeep costs. Or it takes up, keeps costs down, but obviously our melee defense goes up, which is obviously very, very good. So, we shall end the turn. There's nothing else we can really do. Oh, we can, of course, of course, we can assign a provincial governor. We've got our, our family tree here. So, Mercia and Wessex. So, governor's assigned to Wessex because what have we got down here then? Oh, it's because London, I think I pronounced in those times, London... Uh, was under the province of Wessex, which is obviously Winter Winchester and Canterbury as well. Okay, so um, the only one that's not really represented on this campaign is East Anglia. 
we haven't got any faction for them unfortunately which is a shame but um yeah okay so hang on hang on let me think here yeah okay so we'll get it we'll get some provincial governors in there actually we can afford 625 gold who's going to be the best a leader a leader would be probably better as a commander in battle a landowner there we go that's what i want to see you can be governor you would be rather handy to have so who are you? where are you Exrith, you are uh, you're a statesman, so you're an available general later on, I should think. So that's fine. Before we actually end the turn, I've just thought we should have a look at diplomacy a little bit more here and just see if we can get some trade or anything. So Kingdom of Charlemagne, they Welcome, are neutral. I trust oh, you bring words that honor both your oh very good, us. very good. They have got a high chance of accepting my non-aggression pact. So would he take 900 gold? Would well, they pay me 900 gold? Oh. That a marriage Come on, give me a little bit of money. Yes, 600 gold. Lovely, I'll take that. So now let's move it a little bit further on and ask for a bit of trade. No, you're not buying that at the moment. Okay, well maybe down the line we could have a, some of that agreement. So Northumbria are quite neutral as well. And they've got an aggression pact of high. So that would be very good to see, actually, because then, yeah, I'll take 200 gold. Because then, because then, that means the north of England, uh, of Britain, is then secure for the moment. We can then concentrate on these lands if we want to. And then when the time is right, then we'll go back up to Northumbria and attack them. And they've got a nice, they give us a nice buffer between these aggressive Scots over in the... Uh, in this part in, in Pickland. So yes, that is important that we've got that aggression, non-aggression pact with them. I'm very pleased to see. Can you do trade with us? No, maybe trade later on. Kingdom of the Wessex though, they are happy with me. So we get, okay, okay. Let's go for non-aggression then. But again, just settling things with them for the moment is good. It means that we can just concentrate on you know other lands because everyone else really doesn't like us not very much at all so yeah as many friends as we can get is uh, a very good thing so yeah, of course yeah now we can do an edict so research rate or construction cost and growth um i'll go for unit experience at the moment because we're going to be recruiting soon so we may as well get that experience in early on if we can so look at all these duche, the, 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 the duches, the duchies that are going across, all the kingdoms, all the factions are in this campaign. Very nice. So miss it. Oh, here we go. Mission issued. The Kingdom of England own the provinces of Wessex, Mercia, and Northumbria. Become the Kingdom of England. The kingdom rises. So this is what I'm talking about in the previous video I did when I was talking about the features of this campaign. You can form kingdoms from your faction. So we can form, as Alfred the Great began 100 years later on, the formation of the Kingdom of England. So we can do that here. Kingdom rises. So we've got 5 plus morale, 1 loyalty, and public order of plus 8 in all provinces. So a massive bonus for that if we can achieve that so that is something that really does push me to really go for these units so these these factions and uh, make them our own because i do want to form the kingdom of england if you don't want me to do that let me know below but if you do you know let me know as well basically either way is let me know what you want me to do but i i really do feel we should go for the kingdom of england it'd be awesome to see so this army has gone up towards chester where, of course, I've got a settlement, which is quite near where I live, actually. So it's quite good to see them. It's great to see that Chester's on the map, actually. Um, so we should go for some agriculture, because we need to make sure our food is in a high level here. So we'll go from a fields to a farm. And is fertility something that's looked at on this it is level of fertility is still apparent in the game which is obviously good so very rich lands in wessex hence the reason why the danes came across they saw well they originally started just to raid um 
England and, and these uh, these lands. But then after a while, they wanted to settle here because they realised how much of a rich, fertile land we had. So, as you can see here, this is very much apparent in the game. Of course, Wessex being the most fertile, um, which is why they became such a powerful uh, kingdom in the end as well. Well, one of the factors why they became a powerful kingdom. So we have got rich fertile lands ourselves, so we should be okay. Um, so let's just go to normal stance. Let's just have a quick look at that settlement. It is undefended now. So these are out of range, so we just go straight for the city. This may bring them back to um, support, maybe. But we shall just have a little bit of time to construct our ladders, which we will definitely need to assault that city with um, we've got 2200 gold left before we do anything else I have a quick look at the the event messages so Chester's being raided by these guys yeah not great if we take this settlement down is that their only one that they've got it is they've only got one so we should be able to wipe them out pretty soon so that's one less problem to worry about an edict issued for mercy yeah we know about that one so that's fine Okay, so let's end the turn once again. And to see what happens, if anything. So the Kingdom of Gwynedda sort of mustering an army about those things. And also, powers have gone further north. Further north. So now we should have a clear passage to take these guys out. So we have. It's not going to be easy, but let's just fight this battle before we wrap up this first part. It'd be good to see us take down a settlement in the first episode, I think, um, and it will be a nice way to finish off the first part. Now, in terms of the second part, obviously this is an exclusive episode which you've got before the release date. The second part will be coming out on either the 9th or the 10th of December. Obviously, the 10th is when the game is released. I think we are allowed to release another part on the 9th. Um, so I will be doing just that if that's the case. So do look out for that second part um, on the 9th of December. If anything changes, I'll let you know, but I'm sure that's the case. So yeah, let's start the deployment with Fog. And ew, there, these are the two watchtowers we've got to be mindful of. Let's have a quick look over here. No not ideal there <coughs> because it, there's, there's watchtowers on either side of that area there whereas here there's just this, this, these two which we could burn down with our arrows I should think so yeah okay you drop the siege equipment and go over here Start the battle because obviously they'll just sit back for the moment. Oh, balls! They've actually yeah, positioned themselves on the the wall there. But what we'll do is we'll go across this this way. They should just still give us um, range to attack the towers. But the problem is they are going to um, be able to attack my watchtower. So my units, those watchtowers, will be able to attack them. So they're already firing upon them now. I think we're going to have to go... Drop them. Call back, come back a second. Right, cavalry stay there for the moment. Let's hope to God they don't... Burn down our ladders because we could be in trouble here. Okay, so we're moving in with the ladders. I don't as I say want offer to go in yet. Right, we'll move back in to hit this watchtower. Get ourselves on flaming shot. Fast forward a little bit here. Okay. Right, watchtowers. Go for both of them. Also, both units go for the one there, and then once you've taken that one down, straight on to the second please but if you draw away the fire of the watchtowers you know draw them away from hitting our ladders then that could be 
a nice distraction. It would give us a bit of time. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Come on. Oh, they're going up quick. They're going up very quick, the watchtowers, in terms of fire damage. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Get some more rounds off. Get some more rounds off. Keep firing. Keep firing, please. Keep firing. Don't know why you stopped. Here we go. Okay, keep going, keep going. I don't like siege battles at the best of times, so hopefully we'll be okay here. And they're taking a lot of damage already, the uh, the archers are. Come on, lads. Okay, 73%, 75, this is good, let's bring off it a little bit further forward now, so once we're on the ladders, once we're actually at the walls, we should be okay, it's just got to get there first, okay, go, 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 get one of them down at least, oh, I need it there with that one, the volley coming in, Oh, so close, 99%, surely, come on. Right, we're on, we're on, we're on, we're on. The enemy approaches. Come on, lads, one more volley. Done, right, switch to this one. Switch to that one. Right, so we're going up, we're going up now. Of course, we'll get the gatehouse opened up, opened up hopefully, and then we can get our cavalry inside the gates at that point. So they're getting a little damage again on this one. Excellent. So we're well, right. We've gone to the walls here. Engagement has started. Get these two units to go onto this part and go down the side here and just flank around if we can. The tower has been destroyed. destroyed. This Great. Bodes well. This does bode well. They need to get off of him now. He needs to lead his men into the city here. Already, already units trying to waver there, Levy Spearman. Right, crack in. Get yourselves in there, chaps. 40, 50%. Lovely. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Oh, nice. Oh, don't flee. Victory is near, surely. Come on. Here we go. Where's Offer? Get in there. Get into that city, my man. If we can push against the city gates, then at that point we should then be able to get the cavalry in. Here comes Offer. Now we should have the the, uh, the momentum with us now. Okay. Oh, look at that one there down here. Lost his head. I was actually pointing at the screen then as if you were actually watching it with me. That's hilarious. Sorry, guys. <laughs> oh, here we go. Come on. Yes. Oh, the tower's on fire. Brilliant. Now we are cooking. Literally, the city is cooking. Oh no, that unit that was in there, that was wavering, has unfortunately fallen. But it's not to worry because we'll just replenish and recruit more. Oh, they've come out. Let's get the cavalry to charge them. We've got them pinned here and they've already been fired upon by the archers. Okay, st stop firing. Face the other way. Be naughty. Oh, they're being sandwiched at the city gates here. Don't know why the where the cavalry have gone there. They're, they're back here. Here's our mercenaries. Oh, no, they're not. Here we go. Right, so... Finish them off now, and then we've got victory on under the uh, 
wonder what bounce here come on just given you realize that the city is taken the men are cheering here they realize that we've conquered it Saxon are victorious today look at that he's particularly happy that one he's particularly happy however however I think the general remains he will be up here so we've still got work to do yes he is right let's not get cocky we still got to finish the job let's not knock down his barricade He'll be sitting up in, in his hall over here, I'm sure. So we need to make sure we've uh, pushed on. Get the cavalry in. Now we should be out of range with any of these towers. Yeah, we should be okay here. Because you know these siege towers have got phenomenal range on them. So break down the barricades. Okay, right. Zoom in again. Hack away at it, come on. So we know that the barricades have been improved uh, once the game came out. Because I remember barricades when it first was uh, released, Attila. Barricades literally were, were destroyed in about what, five or six seconds. It was literally that, how qu that was how quick it was. But they've improved it significantly now. There's no point in having them before. But now they do actually serve a purpose, which is good. So there we go. Damage is going up nicely now. We've got a lot of units hacking away at it. So let's smash through. Okay, there we go. Up the hill we go. It's going to be a bit of a climb, this is. Let's fast forward it, as we will be here all afternoon. <laughs> okay, big climb up this hill. One more job to do, lads, and then we've done. I know it's tiring. If they're not up here, I would... <laughs> I would die. <laughs> After all this effort. They've got to surely be up here. Let's capture this watchtower, though. Um, the archers... Well, we're getting up there just in case, but they're not going to be... I don't think be used. Okay, let's go. Let's fast forward. Offer leading his men into this city here, as brave as he is, I love that. The King of Mercia leading his men to victory. So they'll go over there, take on the general himself, the Levy Spearman, and then we'll capture the uh, the tower with our with our general offer here. This is gonna be pretty good. I have a good charge here, I should think. Okay, we go. Clash of shields and spears there and swords. Lovely. Right, let's go into cinematic mode again just to finish this one off. Seem to be gaining the advantage straight away. A lot of their units going down quite quickly here. Oh, brilliant. Slashing away. Yes. Victory is near now. Mercia will rise in Wales today. Okay, let's just see what the situation is. So we've got 113 left. Let's get Offer to go on the back. If he can. Can he go on the back? Can he, can he sneak around these tents? He can't, I don't think. We can. Oh, he can. Yes, he can. Once he goes around the back, that's it. Surely that's it. What we do need to do as well in part number two is start to recruit a second army. We can't rely on off his army just to be the only sole one for mercy. We need to make sure we've got a second army being recruited as soon as possible, actually. So that's one thing I must do. Oh, great. Okay, here we go. Rear charge. That's going to hit them straight away. Try and take them out because, again take some more money away from them if we take them down we'll end the battle there then 
close victory this time. Again, Siege is always are a little bit uh, closer than the uh, standard field battles. Uh, but yeah, we didn't do too bad. 4-9-7 in the end. We lost. We took out most of them. But most importantly, we have got the city of Math... Is it Math Rafal? Let's try and pronounce this. Math Rafal. Math Rafal. There we go. I've got it under my control. I lost two units of fried spearmen. I should be able to recruit them back there now. So let's occupy the land. We're not going to subjugate these guys. We want to occupy them. So we've increased in Imperium. We're up to noteworthy now. Excellent. So again, we've increased our skill for our general. Sorry, not general. Our force this time. Our integrity. Our traditions have gone up. Um, so morale. Yeah, absolutely. And replenishment. We'll take that one as well. Definitely. So again, they've got a nice little glass stain or stained glass feature to them as well. I like it. I like it. Um, okay. So repair. So these aren't of a different culture, as you, as you, as you would expect. I'm going to get my words out then. Um, they are the same culture. So they won't have to be converted. They just be, need to be repaired, which is fine. In terms of the... Yeah, they are Christian as well, which is obviously what I thought they would be. So there's no problems with public order. There shouldn't be anyway. We should be able to... Next turn, just sort things out. And then the population should start to... Uh, to calm down but there you have it ladies and gentlemen that is part number one of this mercia campaign completed i hope you've enjoyed it and if you have you know what to do as i said to you early on give me some support spear the like button and i'll be back very soon with part number two on the 9th of december but i uh, hope you've uh, liked the look of the mercians if you have and you want to play as them then if you haven't pre-ordered it you can do still it's available on steam right now to go and purchase if you want to go and play this campaign when it comes out next week so thank you for watching but until next time this is warrior spawner for now saying farewell <laughs>